everyone. Uh, so thank you for coming out today. Uh, we're on day two of True False. We're here in Big Ragtag. Uh, this is Ragtag Cinema, as many of you likely know, uh, shares a nonprofit organization, parent pro nonprofit organization, the Ragtag Film Society with True False. Uh, we work hand in hand throughout the entire year. So I want to thank the entire Ragtag Cinema staff uh, for making this possible. Uh, Corey McCarter, Lindsay, uh, somewhere out here, Steve, somewhere up in the booth, and Tony too. So if we could give them a round of applause. Yes. Okay, so there's an earring uh, that was dropped on the ground, and we're going to see if we can figure out. That's mine. Terrific. Yeah. I'll, I'm gonna. Let's just wait, Ella. I'll, I'll give it to you when you come up here in a second. Okay. Uh, cool. So you are here for a, a pretty exciting historic event here. Uh, so this is the Neither Nor Film Series. If you didn't know. Uh, the Neither Nor Film Series is something we started two years ago, uh, and the idea of Neither Nor is that we're looking at films that somewhere, like True False itself, we're looking at films that exist somewhere between these kind of labels of fiction and documentary, these, uh, these kind of like silly kind of ways that we tend to box films in. These are films that exist somewhere between them. Uh, and we're looking at historical examples of them. So two years ago, we looked at films that were made in the 1960s in New York City as a response to kind of the direct cinema movement that was coming up. Uh, last year, we looked at films that were made uh, in Iran in the 1990s from Kiristami and the Maklava family. Uh, and this year, we're very excited for what I think is our most ambitious series yet. We're looking at films from Poland in the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s. Um, so this, we couldn't do the series last year or this year or next year to the degree that we could without the help of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences, uh, Ampis, so you know them. You might know them for the Oscars, of course, but in addition to that, they're helping out film institutions across the entire country and doing amazing things like this, uh, bringing in polls uh, for the first screenings of their films in the United States in some instances in this case um, ever. So I want to, if we could give a round of applause for the Academy, please. Thank you. So, as I said, this is a series that's focused on films that were made in Poland, um, and we're, we're looking at a handful of directors. Uh, this piece of, this monograph right here, it's 48 pages long, it's available for free, again, thanks to the Academy, uh, out of the box office, so please pick one up. It has 48 pages of interviews and essays that are discussing all the films that are in all six programs of this series. Um, and so one of the directors we're very excited to have here is Mr. Karlikevich, uh, who you'll have a chance to talk to after the, the film. Uh, we screened yesterday his film through and through, and tonight we're screening the case of Pekashinsky. Um, but uh, Ella has conducted interviews with him and plenty of other people uh, there here. So um, the other thing I just want to mention, though, before I introduce Ella is that this is actually an exciting event because we, I should, we, our whole, the ragtag team that I mentioned before, Steve Ruffin, Corey McCarter, Lindsay over here, and Tracy Lane, have been working really hard alongside Justin Dennis of Kenora, the great and Justin Dennis, uh, to get 35 millimeter installed up in this booth. Um, so we're gonna be watching a, a print here uh, of the film. So uh, I wanna thank Justin for all the hard work he's been doing. Uh, we're very excited that this is happening right now. Uh, and now I want to introduce you to the heart of the critic who put this series together and has done a lot of great work. So please help me welcome Ella Bittencourt. To the series. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you, True False. Thank you all for being here. We're so excited that we get such terrific audience to all of our um, Polish cinema screenings. So that's, that's absolutely amazing. And we are showing this film, The Case of Pekoszynski, today on 35 millimeter, I'm told. So that's just definitely something to celebrate. Um, we're extremely fortunate to have with us the filmmaker Grzegorz Kulikiewicz. If we could just welcome him today in the house. We will be speaking with Mr. Kulikiewicz after. We'll be doing a Q&A. I know some of you will be rushing out to the next screening. That's the beauty of True False. We're always running, right? Uh, keeps us warm. But if you can stay, please do. We strongly encourage it. Um, it it's just amazing to hear, to hear Mr. Kolekiewicz talk about this work. And the case of Korkoshinsky, I don't want to say too much because I really think this film speaks for itself. I just want to say it's a hybrid. It's a biopic, really, like no other in the history of Polish cinema, and possibly in the history of world cinema, too. I mean, it's really quite, quite unique. And 
it's not just, I mean, Bronek Prokoshinsky, who uh, you, you're about to see his life story in, on the screen, on one hand, it's extremely important to Polish history. It's very universal, I mean, it's very, um, it's very pertinent to our history because this is someone who is born in 1939 and actually just like Grzegorz Kolejewicz, born in 1939 and, and then the war starts and, and Grzegorz would often say that um, I was born and I was free for a few months and then it always felt like I was being enslaved and what he's referring to of course is the war but then immediately communism after it. But I think in the film, that's also the story of Pekoshinsky very much and I think in the film you really see what it's like to be living in a system that's very eager to make use of you and to manipulate you and, and how difficult it is and how brave sometimes you must be to negotiate your own freedom and integrity. So what's incredible is not just that Ronald Vakrushinsky, he actually died in 2013. He was a real former chess champion in Poland, and so sadly he missed his true false premiere by only two years. But, um, but he, it's not only unique because he plays himself in this film, but because of the structure, really the form of this film, it's like memory and the past are being activated. And, and you really see that. I almost, sometimes when I, when I see it, I'm tempted to think of it as um, communist boyhood regained. So I won't say any more and um, enjoy. Thank you for being here.